Hello, everybody. We're continuing our walk through the New Testament. We're in Matthew 21 today, and we begin this last week of Jesus' life as he goes to the cross. This is powerful stuff. Every story, really every verse of this whole story is crucial to what's happening and what's going to happen to Jesus and what it does for all of us. So it starts, you know, he starts by coming into town at the cries of Hosanna. Save us, Lord. That's what it means. Save us, crying out for mercy from Jesus to save them from Roman occupation. Little did they know the irony of that word. Hosanna is something we all need to be crying out. Save us from our own sin. And that's what Jesus was about to do. And as you read through the chapter, you'll see he comes into the temple area and he is upset. The last thing he wants to see is what they're doing regularly in the temple. He sees money changers changing out money to make a profit. He sees the priests and the Levites who are there to be intercessors for people, to, to bring the words of God to people and to bring the people's needs to God. And yet what they're doing is just satisfying their own greedy selves off of the people. They were robbing God. And that's what Matthew 21, 13, Jesus says to him, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. We're supposed to be a place where we unite God with the people, but you've turned it into a den of robbers. <laughs> Robbing God is serious business. Now, maybe you've experienced uh, being robbed before. I certainly have. A couple times, had somebody steal uh, my car, had somebody break into my car, steal the radio out twice, that happened. I, I, I've had people break in or try to rob me uh, in my business. You know, those things have happened. Maybe you've had someone break into your home or business and done the same. It's not pleasant to feel that loss that comes when somebody steals from you. Imagine God not only having people rob him of what he is worthy of and deserves, but do it openly so that where he can see it, knows it, watches it happen and has to endure that and out of his mercy doesn't respond. And here's Jesus walking in saying, you've turned the temple, the place where I should come and be worshiped, you've turned it into a den of robbers. You're robbing God, not just of money, but robbing God of the purpose, of the spirit, of the, of the kingdom promise that we should be giving him. We should be the people giving to God, not robbing God. And here they were doing everything they could to make money off of God for themselves. Instead of coming to God in the presence of God, giving their sacrifices as an honor to him and a way of reuniting themselves with God, even though we as sinners had no business doing that. And so here's this scene happening, and Jesus is casting them out because what he wants is for his place of worship to be a place that brings people back to God, not shutting them out. It's so interesting how we can let this happen to ourselves as well. We can rob God without thinking about it. And maybe you have. Maybe you are, without even knowing, without even trying. You're living for yourself instead of for the Lord. You, you're robbing God of the tithes that he deserves instead of giving them appropriately. You're holding them for yourself. There's a whole list of excuses all of us have given. But today's a day when maybe you should rethink that. We don't want to be cast out with the robbers. <laughs> we want to enter his temple with prayer. So we need to stop robbing God in whatever way that is. If you need to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. You need to come before him and bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. We, we need to remember that his storehouse, whatever we have received, we need to freely give. Let's all call on the name of the Lord together and watch what happens when we bring our praise to him instead of trying to get something from him. God bless you as you do, and we'll continue again tomorrow with the next story out of Matthew.